I love the sequence when you guys are destroying the house. And obviously, from what I can tell, it looked like a real house you were destroying. How many takes did it take? Was the glass, like, was it fake glass? Like, how, how did the scene go down? What were you, how, what were you told to destroy? Was it, was it all improv? It was a piece of a house that, that Jean-Marc had had made and then had uh, fitted with everything. You know, it was like a real house, everything in the drawers, the food, everything. And uh, and we were just, and nothing was sort of breakaway or fake. Everything was built as it was. Um, so that, you know, when we destroyed things, we destroyed them for real. If, you know, we had to be careful when we were doing it and uh, sometimes not. But, like, we actually pulled apart this whole section of the house, you know. How did it feel? Uh, it was great. It was great fun. <laughs> it was great fun. Yeah. I mean, it was, um, it was, I think there's a part of, there's a part of me that, Turns when you demolish anything, that's sort of like a three-year-old, you know, like mm -hmm. the three or four-year-old who builds something and then kicks it down. But then I also realized that it's so much harder to create than it is to demolish, mm -hmm. um, and ultimately so much more satisfying when you do create and a lot harder. But the the satisfaction and the cathartic feeling of just destroying a marble tabletop uh, can't be beat. You know, I have to ask you, one thing that I love about this movie is uh, when his when she does pass away, he starts to pay attention to things that he never noticed before in life. Right, yeah. I'm wondering, have you ever walked away from a role and then started noticing things in your life that you didn't notice based on the role you played? Huh. Yeah, I mean, I think that's why I like to act, is hmm. that, you know, you, fought, you find yourself in worlds, but that's why I also love preparation. It's not just the playing of the role, it's the... I usually I usually spend lots of, many months beforehand in the world that my character would find themselves in and within that you you get to learn from people who are doing real interesting jobs and and all of those situations I've found myself in in terms of research have changed my life. Mm -hmm. So if anything it's not even necessarily the process of making the movie it's the process preparing for the movie that and I end up walking away going with with new friends pretty much usually one if I'm lucky more, but like usually one or two and people who have, you know, shown me uh, uh, so many things. I mean, I think about, show me that like I had profound judgment that I didn't know I had mm. or that I was judging something that I didn't know I was judging or um, that I, uh, how hard a skill is from, from, you know, the inside when you're watching from the outside and kind of think, oh, how hard could that be? And it's close to impossible, and people who do it on a daily basis or for their life are masters and extraordinary, you know, make it look so easy. But all those things, you know, I always walk away from everything I do having learned something. Yeah, I grew up watching you Donnie Darko. I love Donnie Darko so much. I think it's one of the best movies ever made. And you were so yeah. young on that set. And I'm so wondering, young. is there something from that set that you learned from that filmmaker that you still utilize today in, in the movies you make? <sighs> yeah, um... So much. Uh, you know, um, one of the biggest things was we shot that movie in 22 days. Wow. And, or 28 days. And there's a real preciousness to making movies. It becomes very precious. And there was no time to be precious on a movie like that. You had to move. You had to make mistakes. You had to move with the mistakes you made. You know, you had to make a wrong move. And then, whoop, you had to go that way and figure your way through. And I think that's what I found about movie making that I love the most is that there is not one way to do it and that the universe kind of delivers you random things all over the place. There's so many elements coming at you that are not what you eventually, what you expected. Mm -hmm. And it's a really nice metaphor for life. And, you know, if you can like take a de deep breath and say things are going to happen in all of our lives and it's how you move through it and how you respond to it as opposed to the thing that happens. That was the biggest lesson that I took from making that movie because you know, we had no time, we had fewer resources, and then it's lasted for close to 20 years now. Yeah. And uh, and we would have never thought it at the time. How did they time it perfectly where the M&Ms got messed up and couldn't, didn't come out? Did they, how many takes did that take for them to mess up the shot? That was, that is a movie, movie prop <laughs> magic. That is the prop, the prop master, a very good prop master. That was designed. Okay. It was not, yeah. I was like, did he they sit did, there all day? They did like a thousand takes <laughs> just to get like, yeah, one that was screwed up. Yeah. yeah. I was like, did they sit there all day and do this? The Fritos always got caught, but the M&Ms didn't. So we like, we tried to get the Fritos and that didn't work as well. So well, I got you these. Just, just I had a feeling. I had a Yeah, I was like, Thanks, yeah, man. just bring them to them. Why not? These are actually my favorite snacks. Oh, so 